Hello, Andy here with another video. Yes, another video. I know you haven't asked for it, but you know that's what you get if you don't ask. Um, I, I've I've had no end of request. Well, I've had no requests to talk about um, my Doctor Who book collection. So I thought I'd inflict that all, all that on you because that's the sort of chap that I am. Uh, I'm going to just sort of. Not in any particular order because I've sort of all piled up. So, um, so the first one I'm going to go with, just because it's easier to, to get, get rid of that, is the Doctor Who Quick Reads book uh, story, Made of Steel, which was the first story released to feature Martha, which was released before her appearance on uh, on television, and. It's written by Terence Dix, who was a huge, hugely important writer during the 20th century run of Doctor Who. So huge, massive, massively important there. Um, so just pop, I'll pop it on the floor as it is. And then pick it all up later. Now this isn't technically Doctor Who, but it's Doctor Who related. It's uh, Torchwood, Another Life by Peter Angelides. So... That's actually very, it's a very good read, actually. It's a, it's a good story. So I'll pop it down there. Right. Another quick read here by Gareth Roberts this time. And it's I Am a Dalek, The Tenth Doctor and Rose. So very, yeah, good story. What the quick reads were, where they were sort of, to sort of get people who weren't big readers um, to sort of read, basically. So they're kind of, they were sort of an encouragement to, to read. Now this um, this novel is a Tenth Doctor novel. It's the Resurrection Casket by Justin Richards. And um, funny enough, I was talking to my son, my, my youngest, um, today, on this morning, to take him to school. And uh, yesterday we found out he was reading a Doctor Who novel, which I don't actually have, called um, The Clockwise Man by Justin Richards. Uh, a Ninth Doctor novel. But he'd all be, be, he told me that he'd actually already read this one at school. So I said, well, I've got this. So if you're interested. And, and he sort of seemed to be. And I said, yeah, I've got others as well. So we'll see. He, he isn't, he isn't, he's not a television watcher. So he's not, so he's not necessarily interested in the TV program yet. But if you get, 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 get there through the novels, it's not going to be too bad. Now, another one from Terence Dix. This, this time it's um, World Game. Which was what part of the past Doctor Adventures range, and this takes place weirdly between the War Games and Spearhead from Space. If you know anything about Doctor Who, you'll know that the War Games is Patrick Troughton's final story, and Spearhead from Space is John, John Pertwee. So the reason for this is that um, because of some inconsistencies in um, Patrick Troughton's later appearances in Doctor Who. If there was a fan theory of season 6b which i'll just put it on that's better season 6b which um presupposed that or purported or whatever suggested that um the the, the, the actually the second doctor before he was regenerated because that's basically what happens um he was taken out of time and made to work for the celestial intervention agency or cia yeah, that's a, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's a good story. It's, it's, it's not particularly necessary, but it's, it's, it's an interesting read. This one is by Gary Russell, and it's Spiral Scratch, and it was for until until relatively recently the only officially sanctioned no explanation of what happened to the Sixth Doctor because I think as I mentioned in the previous video, Colin Baker was dismissed from the role his contract was not renewed and as such his sort of regeneration was kind of forced at the beginning of Sylvester McCoy's first story no explanation given and this kind of explains what that was but um, um, say a couple of years ago there was a big finish released the last adventure and and the final four stories and the, and the final story sort of kind of not necessarily contradicts that, but it, but, but it offers an alternate explanation of what went on. So that's the um, the Gallifrey Chronicles, which is an Eighth Doctor um, novel, the final one in the range, actually, the Eighth Doctor Adventures. Um, 
which was published after Christopher Eccleston season had, had come to an end and um, that's very good it's a really good read it's a, it's a little bit you know a bit of fan service going on but you know it's it's entertaining enough it's good you know it's open-ended as well which I think is helpful talking of the ninth doctor uh, by Stephen Cole we've got the monsters inside which features um, the green farting aliens from Aliens of London World War Three, the Slitheen, or more specifically the Blatherine Slitheen, the Blatherine later on appearing in person, Ooh, that's horrible. in person in the Saturday Adventures, a story called The Gift, I think. Actually, I think they were Blatherine Slitheen as well. Uh, anyway, so sidetrack. Another Eighth Doctor story here, Reckless Engineering, by uh, who's that? By Nick Nick Walters, and it's my well, these novels are interesting because because you, you basically got a whole area of the Doctor's life that's, that was unexplored on television, and you've got so the, the characters on, on here in here are Fitz Kreiner and Angie Kapoor. Um, the Gallifrey Chronicles has, has, has since been replaced by um, Trix McMillan. I think that's her, that's her last name. But she also makes, but she, but she does make an Trix does make an appearance in here as you know with, with somebody else at the time. Um, so yeah, uh, obviously the cover there is um, uh, a mock-up of the Isle of Bride Kingdom Brunel, very famous um, photograph. As a, so so that's yeah it's uh, it, it's not the best. Of the ones that I've got, but you know, it's it's, it's worth a, it's, it's definitely worth a read. So back to the Eighth Doctor. This is uh, the Crooked World by Steve Lyons. Um, and as the cover probably tells you, he, this is the Doctor trapped in a cartoon world, which is uh, an interesting idea. But I don't think it's one that would translate particularly well to, to television. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, it might, but. You know, sort of a Roger Rabbit kind of way, but you know, I don't know. Anyway, Mark Michalowski with Relative Dementias, which is a brilliant novel uh, featuring the Seventh Doctor and Ace. That was, was brilliant. I, I seriously, I highly recommend that. That's great. Uh, Asylum by Peter Darvill Evans. Peter Darvill Evans was the uh, editor on the Virgin uh, novel range. In the early 90s and uh, this features the fourth doctor as played by Tom Baker and Nyssa who was a companion later of the fourth doctor and, and sort of continued into the fifth doctor era but this is from this is from before the doctor has met Nyssa but after Nyssa has met the doctor kind of not quite sure why but you know it's it's there it's it's a it's a thing. So Peter Darwin Evans again with Independence Day featuring and the Seventh Doctor and Ace. I, do you know it, it's it, it's it's probably worth reading once, um, but it kind of the fifth chapter is, is phenomenally long. Is it the fifth chapter or the third chapter? I can't remember any chapters it is, but one of the chapters is phenomenally long. It's half, half, half a book long. It's, Fairly unnecessary. And you got um, Bird Degrees by Paul Mars or Paul Maggers. I think it's I think it's Mars. Is it, is it, is it, I think he's Norwegian. And this features the Third Doctor and Joe and Unit and the Master. And a character called Iris Wildtime, who um, would later who did met the Doctor and other incarnations would later have her own audio series on Big Finish. Played by Katie Manning, who oddly enough also played Joe on television. So there we go. From Simon Messingham, we have Tomb of Valdemar, featuring the Fourth Doctor, obviously, with the First Romana, played by Mary Tam, who sadly passed away in 2012, I eh? think. And uh, K9. So yeah, that's a. And this takes place within the um, Key to Time era, sort of the series, season, season 16, I think it is. Key to time. 
So from Christopher Bulis, we have City at World's End, which is the first Doctor, Susan, Ian and Barbara. So the very first TARDIS team that we ever saw. And it takes place between sort of the first season and the second season. It's very good. It's very good. So elements of it, sort of, there's a suggestion that, that Susan could regenerate, which kind of sort of, you know, at the, at the time of, of the TV series, there's actually no concept of that. I know, I know, I know it's retrospective and all that, you know, retroactive doodah, but that's what it's called, officially, retroactive doodah. That's its proper name. I'll have you know. I know these things. Right, from Stephen Cole and Justin Richards, we have The Shadow in the Glass, which is actually brilliant. It's uh, Six Doctor, obviously. Um, well, if you, know, if you know that's the Six Doctor, it's obvious. If you don't, then you, it's not obvious. Um, it uh, also features uh, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart and Adolf Hitler. Um, so it's a kind of a not, it's not quite a what if scenario, but 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 it, but it could have been. It, 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 it's it's very very good. So it's from one of the and of course this is this is a later a, a later issue because it's from the from the history collection. It was published um, a few years ago. Also from that collection, we have, from Steve Lyons, The Witch Hunters. Again, featuring Susan, Ian and Barbara, as well as the, doctor, the first Doctor. Um, takes place during the Salem Witch Trials. A very good novel, must be. Very good. Highly recommend that one. Uh, again, with the still with the first Doctor here, we've got, from Martin Day, Bunker Soldiers. And it's... Which is the same as the first Doctor, but with Stephen, now played by Peter Purvis, later of Blue Peter in, in the UK, and Dodo. And this takes place during the uh, Mongol invasion of some city or other. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't quite remember. Um, but uh, I, I, I think it's something to do with, 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 with Ogadai Khan and, and, um, and all that. So, yeah. I think it's, I think it's a Russian city. It probably is. It's been a while since I've read it, but yeah, it's a, it's a decent enough story. Part of it is narrated by by Stephen in the first person, and, it's, and if you know anything about Stephen from the TV series, it's a little bit odd that he's narrating quite so eloquently. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying he's, the, the character's not, not an intelligent character, because he is, but it's, it doesn't necessarily fit the characters we've seen on television, but that's fair enough. Uh, another history collection one, this is Human Nature by Paul Cornell, and some of you may uh, recognise the title, because this, this was the novel that was adapted into the TV series with, TV story with David Tennant and Martha, and, uh, and Freeman Regiment as uh, Martha Jones. Uh, Set during 1913, yeah, uh, wonderful Jessica Hines. Um, and there is, so really, so that, that's the, that's the, original story that I was based on. Um, so here we have, I talked earlier about, about the New Adventures, the, the Virgin Range, or the, the Virgin Range, I didn't mention it was called the New Adventures, I don't think. But this is the, again by, uh, this is by Kate Orman, who was the first woman, I think, to write for the novel range, and the first Australian, I think. I think that's right. Um, uh, the Left-Handed Hummingbird. Which is a really good read. I highly recommend that. That's a, that's a good story. Another one from Peter Darvel Evans here, Deceit. Which, like, like um, Left Handed Hummingbird, features Ace and a character called um, Professor Bernie Summerfield, who has since gone on to have a life of her own in, in other you know, novel ranges, audio stories. And all sorts of things. So, you know, really worth, you know, invest, investigating her actually as a character. This is a Peter Darvel Evans's first novel. So it's quite, it's quite a thick novel. Um, it's, probably, it's probably, it's probably his best, his best novel. Followed by Asylum, then followed by uh, Independence Day. But, in my view, but uh, yeah, that's. Uh, you know, deceit. 
Ace, Ace had, had left for a good while previously and then she sort of she came back in that one. So that's. Now this is a, a third book in a four part series called Time Worm. This is Time Worm Apocalypse. You have Time Worm Genesis, spelled with a Y uh, between the two S's. Time Worm Exodus and then this one, then Time Worm Revelation. I've only got this one. Um, yeah, it's all right. By Nigel Robinson, I believe. Yeah, Nigel Robinson. Yeah, so that's, you know, it's worth, it's, it's worth a read. Now, we've got here uh, a novelisation of a TV story, The Happiness Patrol, by Graham Curry, who actually wrote the, the TV story as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a good story. It's, it's very good on television. It's a very good TV story as well. I it guess it's a little bit of flack because it's sort of got that Bertie Bassett type character in it. But... It, called the Candyman, but he's, the Candyman is very effective. He's very good in this. He's, he's, he's sort of described differently in the novel, but you know, it's it's a really good story. It's a really good read. Uh, Novelisation of Planet of Giants from Terence Dix. This, this is one of the last Target novelizations, and it shows, frankly, it's I mean, it, it's it's not a particularly strong story to begin with. And it's, you know, it tells you how I'm about to sneeze. I'm always feeling I'm about to sneeze. But yes, this is, um, so yeah, I mean, if you know the story, it, 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 it sort of builds on that. And actually it includes parts from the missing, because the, the last episode was, was, was truncated from, from, from two episodes. So you've got that. And that's what got expanded upon there. And then uh, uh, the guy called Ian Levine did a, you know, put that back in as a, as a, you can watch that as a bonus feature on the DVD. Should you so require to do so. From William M's, uh, Galaxy 4, again, from from the writer of the uh, of the thing. Uh, Terrence Dix didn't write Planet of Giants on television. That was um, Lewis Marks, I believe. Oh yes, Galaxy 4. That's a decent enough story, actually. It actually, reads better than it plays, I think. But you know, it's a good, good story. It's from the Dravins and the Rills. It's good, it's good. You know, the Dravins are beautiful women, and the Rills are hideous creatures. And the, the twist is, yeah. From Mike Tucker, Snow Globe Seven, featuring the Tenth Doctor and Martha Jones. Mike Tucker is said he was a. Um, I still is actually. He was, he, he was a special effects supervisor on, well, special effects person, model maker, and things like that on um, the uh, on the TV series. But he, he started actually in the um, Seventh Doctor era, so he actually, he's actually come in from the, the original run into um, the new run, basically. So he's and he's, and he's a writer as well. So again, another one of these quick reads from Terence Dix, uh, Revenge of the Jadoon. The Jadoon having featured in Martha's first television appearance. Uh, the Rhino Men. From James Swallow. Any relation to James Spitz, we wonder. Um, is Peacemaker. A, uh, a western basically with no so no, without any well there's well there's sci-fi elements too obviously they're the clade but um it's, it's, it's a really good read actually if you, I mean, it's a, yeah very good um of course on television they did it they did a, a sort of a western thing with uh, a town called mercy um which had the similarities to that for obvious reasons but it's, it's a different story so simon gurrier a I think that's how it's pronounced, Gurrier, something like that. It's a French name, anyway. Um, the Pirate Loop, which features a band of pirate badges. That's all you need to know, basically, because you know, it's, it's, it's a damn good read. It's one, it's one of the better better novels, I think. And for, from Trevor Baxendale, we have Wishing Well, which, is, again, is an, another really good story. I'd seriously recommend that as well. It's a great story. Uh, Trevor Baxendale is the son of... Alan Baxendale, is it? The the writer? Yeah, Alan Baxendale. 
Now this isn't a book as such, but this was this was a short story from the Daily Telegraph, nearly ten years ago, called what's it called? Sorry, just bear, bear with me a moment because it's called the hopes and fears of all the years. So, so you've got some illustrations there. You got there's a, there's a little bit creased because that's yeah, there's another one there, and you've got. The TARDIS there, and that's the that's the actual cover there. You see the the, the doctor sticking his head out the chimney, out the, out the fireplace. So and that's written by Paul Cornell. So that's a that's, good, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good short story. Right, I've got one of these. This is a Decide Your Destiny, um, called Alien Arena. By a chap with a rather unfortunate name, Richard Dunworth. Um, it's it's all right, you know, if you, if you feel like that sort of thing, so it's okay. It's not it's not really my cup of tea, but it's you know. Although I do remember the Choose Your Own Adventure range from sort of the eighties when you had the, the Sixth Doctor with Turlough and things like that. It's quite mad, really. And then we have. From Stephen Cole, the Sting of the Zygons. Now the Zygons, at this point when this was published, hadn't appeared on television since the, um, the Fourth Doctor story. Hmm. Pardon me. Terror of the Zygons, and in fact, it was their only appearance at the time. And Sting of the Zygons kind of picks up from that and kind of doesn't. It's um, yeah, it's. Not, they aren't very good review, but they aren't, they aren't book reviews. They're just sort of brief explanations of what I've got. So yeah, so that's by Stephen Cole. Uh, yeah, it's good. So there we are. Now we have here the story of Martha by Dan Abnett, plus four other writers, and, I, and I'm going to have to sort of do it like that because I can't actually read otherwise. Uh, David Roden. Steve Lockett and Paul Lewis, Robert Sherman and Simon Jowett. Now, David Roden, oh, Robert Sherman wrote Dalek and, and, a, and a fair few things for Big Finish as well, including um, The Times of Midnight, which I mentioned in a previous video, and a story called Jubilee, which was later, which is basically what Dalek was based on. Um, but David Roden, is the chap who was responsible for writing the 1993 Children in Need special, Dimensions in Time, which was a crossover with EastEnders, the, the, the UK soap opera. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what? I actually quite like that. I, 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 I do. So we have here, what have we got? So the Darksmith Legacy it is. I've got all of these. So we've got so just briefly, the Darkness Legacy was a an interactive story range. Basically, you could it's going to be quite a long video again. I'm sorry about that. It was um, an interactive story range. You could go online and do, do and continue the story there. And so we have the Dust of Ages by Justin Richards, The Graves of Mordain by Colin Brake, and these are sort of. After doing this right, okay. So we've got um, the Color of Darkness by Richard Dunworth. We've got the Depths of Despair by Justin Richards. We've got the Vampire of Paris by Stephen Cole. The Game of Death by Trevor Baxendale. The Planet of Oblivion by Justin Richards. The Pictures of Emptiness by Jacqueline Rayner. The Art of War by Mike Tucker. Good looking chap there. On the cover, I mean, not me, obviously, because that would be utterly ridiculous. 
and the end of time not to be confused with the end of time um, the, the final tenth doctor story so yeah so that's budget by justin richards so that's no uh, they're, they're worth a read you know they're, 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 they're fun good and we have another um quick read here the santaran games by jacqueline rayner so there we are i'm at the 25 minute mark i'll tell you what i'll do i'm going to stop there and I'm going I'm to do a second video. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, and I'll see you shortly. Okay, ta-da.